But, but no, just in that same point, talking about rhyme or reason, social media, you on the social media. <laughs> oh, so, man. But, but I'm again, all over social media. Well, well, like, well, like for well, me, no, like. But no, but the thing about it is, I want to understand your rhyme or reason on what in the hell you be doing on social media. One of the cool things about having you guys over tonight is we got like 40 years of like different eras of baseball and stuff. I mean, you growing up, I'm sure you're watching baseball on TV. Like these guys watching baseball on TV. I grew up watching it. So we've seen like a lot of different eras of baseball, right? Like 80s baseball was way different than 90s, was way different than the 2000s. And now like the game's kind of changed over, over the, you know, over those years. Like how do you guys feel baseball's doing right now? Like, wh where is baseball right now? Like, what do you think of the, of the game? Um, well, on the minor league side, um, especially with, you know, um, a lot of the, the new driveline guys coming over and having Bodie over, um, you know, the rap soto, the analytics um, is really starting to take over, obviously. And I haven't really tapped into that myself yet just because of where I am with my rehab. Are you scared at all that that, like, that stuff would be a negative in the game? Does that ever cross your mind? Like no, I just think that like at some point, it's great. I know a lot of guys are able to balance it and um, the mind is wired where they, you know, cause I know there's a lot of guys that get too caught up into the analytics and into um, all that stuff and they can't just go out and perform. So like at the end of the day, you gotta go out and play baseball. Yeah. That's really what it is. Um, and I think that if you're able to balance it and know that you still have to just go out there and play, I think those are the most successful guys. For you, so you're using like pitch data stuff and like yep. to, to prepare, you got scouting reports. Like, do you use any sort of, use cameras, like any sort of stuff to get ready to face a guy like Hunter? Or? <laughs> yeah, we, we have a lot of, uh, we do a lot of sensors. So we'll hook up sensors and, and basically go through swing motions and stuff like that, trying to see you know where the body is, you know how things can be better. How do you you know get more power? You know the sensors will, oh, no. will hook up and make a it, no, it will make a three D <sighs> image of your body, your swing, and basically try to tell you you know from this data, this is how your swing can be more powerful. Are you getting the most out of your swing? And for me, um, honestly, I'm I'm kind of out on it. I mean, I think uh, you know. Hitting is, you know, see ball, hit ball. Like that's how simple I've always played. I've never made it any more than that, right? I came from a small school in Kentucky. You know what I mean? I didn't have access to, you know, advanced equipment. You know, I didn't have a hitting coach until I got into pro ball. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, jumping in and kind of seeing all that firsthand was just a lot. It was like, whoa. Okay, you. There was none of that there stuff, was right? None like, of that. I'm pretty did much. Did you even have an in-game video system? No, like we had. See, and that's the thing about it is, in Cleveland, I was the one who started the video. That's right. That's right. I started the whole system. I had the little small eight millimeter tap <laughs> tapes. I used to take them on the road. I used to figure out who we're who we're facing that day. So, and I kind of looked at that. And me, I was really good at. For me, pitchers tipping. I was really good at that. Mm -hmm. I was very good at knowing this little bit of things that a lot of guys didn't see. I saw it. And I watched my videos and I'm saying, well, Ryan, like, wait a minute, did he just do this to throw a curveball? Did he just do this to throw his split finger or whatever? Mm -hmm. I saw all of that early and that's what I started. What, what was your training like? Like, like? How did you train when you were coming up? I trained, like I said, I trained on the things I knew what I was gonna be doing when I'm playing the actual game. Baseball yeah. specific, yeah. Baseball specific. Speed as in my first step, mm -hmm. how fast I can get from home to first. I worked on doing a sprint, walking back, sitting down for a second, getting back up, doing a sprint again. Because that's, that's what, what you, you actually yeah. did yeah. in the game. And people don't get that concept. I think that's part of the reason I got hurt. You know, I look back on, you know, last off season, not this past one, but the one before, I trained to, you know, get spring training big. You know what I mean? That was the first off season, you know, that I wanted to, you know, put on some weight, right? Get big. Um, but like, I wasn't concerned about what made me good, right? Like I was good at 215 pounds. You know, I didn't need to roll into spring training at 235. Yeah. You know, I wanted to get, you know, every aspect of my body bigger, wanted to, you know, lift heavy and I did all that. 
right? And then showed up to spring training, right? And my muscles weren't loose, right? I had tight muscles, yeah. right? And with my build, right, it's, that just doesn't work. Yeah. Went out there in spring training, couple games in, right? Hamstring, ankle, mm-hmm. that extra you know, weight. all that, yeah. you know, extra yeah. weight, right? Again, that, that's the perfect example when I try to explain to guys, I played 17 years in the big leagues and I was never, I was the same weight. Because again, I knew what I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to be somewhere I, wa- I wasn't. And what got me there, I wasn't trying to be yoked. You know, for me, I always tell the guys, when you get bigger, you're changing your hitting angle. So now you're, instead of you're swinging like this, now you're like this. So now your body is doing something totally different and then you're trying to figure out, why can I hit like I was last year? What am I doing? I'm stronger. (laughs) No, you're stronger. Biceps in the way. (laughs) No, No, now you're swinging like that and now you're not as quick and now you're trying to figure out that right angle with your muscles. I think that's that's a super important point. Like, pitching is not about I mean, anything in baseball, really, but pitching is all about just the timing and the sequencing. Like, what positions can your body be in at the right time? Not necessarily how big and strong you are. Like, the dudes who are big and jacked and whatever, like, they can throw hard, and then you see their velocity just just fall off real quick. Mm -hmm. The guys that pitch forever, I mean, mean, the Maddoxes and, like, these dudes, Pedro Martinez is a great one. Skinny. Mm. Yeah, he had like three muscles. (laughs) 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 Pedro had, you know, what you think about it is? He'll throw 88, 99, and then he'll throw a 98 on you. You're like, yeah. that little dude just threw 98? Mm. Yeah. That the whip. little muscle, Long it's the whip. whip. Long, Long and loose. loose. Yeah. And now that's, that's what Pedro did. You're like, all of a sudden, you're like, yeah. all of a sudden. So a lot of guys didn't know how to hit Pedro because that 98 was somewhere, and you didn't know when it was going to come out. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing about so, that. So how, how, how could you face Pedro? Oh, I killed him. Yeah. He's, he said you're like one of the toughest dudes to get out. He like, he, you were that guy for him, yeah. right? Like, so what was your answer to that? How did you? Because again, like I was telling you earlier is that I know my strength and I understand my weakness. And I knew his strength and his weakness. His strength was to get you off the plate and, and then show up. his strength away. Yeah. Reason why he didn't get me because I knew Inside that. was not my strength anyway, so why would I try to move to and correct it. my strength? I mean, yeah. my weakness. Yeah. So I stood there. So how like so? What's your approach? At, what's the Mariners pitcher, the Asian pitcher uh, that literally like you say the ball turn, like yep. goes up all the way and then it's like boom. So what's your? It's almost what, like Hadel Nomo. He used to do that turn. Damn. Damn, you feel that? Oh, yeah. oh my yeah. goodness. Dude, I, I agree. Now it's like a machine. It's like a machine. That was tough because yeah. uh-huh. it was almost a deception. He was deceiving you by. So, yeah, what do you think about that, too? Like, Strowman does that a lot with his leg lifts and holding. Creed, and... Wasn't it Creed uh, 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 with the Reds? He's and not even with the Giants. Oh, wait, wait, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shimmy and Sh- shake. shake. Yeah. That right there, that is messing up your release point. That's what I've changed. My, my arm action's a lot shorter than before. Yeah. Because my still, oh, the still the pictures. Long, oh, the guy with the longer arms? Oh, I got Oh, I love that. Right. Yeah, I've changed that. Might be able to catch the grip. You don't even catch grip, right? Yeah. I'm not really a big guy yeah. on catching the grip, right? Be able to see, oh, I see yeah, curveball, right? I see curveball <laughs> grip. No, actually, if you look out, you can see it, bro. See, and that's where good to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's where we got some, some work to be done. Yeah, get some work at, you know what? Fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I can, okay, I can, like when, I, when, I, when it's here, right? When it's like here, but not like anything oh, before, dude, right? When it, when I, when I see the pop, like I see the pop, you but I'm not, see. I'm not right here. Well, you need to be right there. Right? Not all yeah. the time. You need to be right there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> not all the time. Some guys, some guys, But if right. you are right there, bro, <laughs> oh, it's, oh, right. it's yeah. going to be so you don't, need, right. you don't need a trash can for that. Yeah. Well, well, that's, that's what I mean. you want to start about that. Barry, Barry talked a lot about like, Barry. Uh, Barry Bonds, like the the eyesight and stuff like that. Well, I hope not ball, ball, that's not ball game too. <laughs> but go ahead. But so, I mean, I, I've heard of stories and like you, I mean, you played against, you played with guys that played against, with them, get whatever. Played right? with them. Yeah. Two. You pl- oh, you did play with them, that's right. The World Series of Diamonds. That's right. So he's, damn, you were in the, I've been, I've you been played a, with some, I you played with, with some people. I played yeah. with Chipper, Frank, Sammy, Manny, Albert, Barry. Damn. Um, Brian Giles, Jeter, right? Jeter, Fake Rod. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a story wow. behind that one. It seems like there's a story behind that one, but, but yeah, 
play a lot no, of guys. That's what that's what he says. Is like or, or all the things I hear about him is that he could see, like, he could see stuff that other people just could not see. So he'd come back in and be like, oh yeah, just look for look for this. And people are like, yeah, bro, what? what? Yeah. Mm. Pitchers, pitchers, I always say, pitchers tell you what they're throwing. I don't care what you say. I mean, they tell you what they're throwing. So you don't need a like you say you don't need a garbage can. Pitchers gonna do something. You ever had a you ever had a guy like actually tell you in a game? Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you I've, something. I've been that no, guy. That was no, a while ago. Really, 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 off. <laughs> you, really? Yeah. On accident. How, how did that? Oh, on yeah, accident. See, mine yeah. was accident too, but, not yeah. intentionally. Oh, I've done it intentionally. They, they, intentionally the like, guy I was facing had, hadn't been picked. He's been throwing bullpens for a while, and I think he got in there, and I was the first guy to face him, and he just. Just hit one of those Johns. Like, you had to oh, have been spilling like, yourself. But, 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 you had to have been filling oh, yourself. I'm glad you guys are saying that because <laughs> it's spring training. Oh, man. First earlier where the pitcher's telling you what they're throwing. Are you not hitting the ball at the ballpark? No, you're not. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about you know what's coming, Jose Rijo, Rijo with the Reds. In the game, in the big leagues. <laughs> yeah, here it comes. Oh, man. Every pitch? Like five or? innings. No shit. Mm. Wow. <laughs> that was Man. the craziest thing. I'm like, Why? I gotta go watch this video. That's funny. Yeah, is if it you can like hear fastball and then. Yeah, no. no. Uh. <laughs> fastball. It was a fastball. Curveball. It was a curveball. I love that. I love that. It was a curveball. How does that mess with your head as a hitter? How did that game go, too? Like, did, was he I think you're trying to think about how good that fastball is. Yeah, yeah. He had like shut up. I mean, he might have five shots. That's a serious hitter. That is a serious hitter. No, that's no, yes. Ask BC Larkin, ask him about that. Oh, that's okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Rio. Yeah. Wow. Oh, he like, that's crazy. Like, yeah. like with some. So, mm. so are, are dudes <laughs> coming back to the dugout like, what is this guy doing? Like, they don't oh, believe what they, they know what he was doing. Oh, what's the fastball? <laughs> like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He was, Rio was nasty. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying is that was when people were talking about you, you knew what was coming. Yeah, you knew it was a fastball. But if you got a guy throwing 98, and then he turned around and throw an 87 mile fastball. Right. It, that's it, what it's I want to like, It's like you don't, it's like you don't know what's coming. <laughs> so, and that's where uh, that, you know what's coming, it's a little overrated. Yeah. It is. If, if, if Trevor throws his nastiest slider, you know it's coming, you still won't hit it. Mm -hmm. Mariano Rivera, you knew exactly what he was throwing. He was throwing a cutter. Every so, pitch. And he's Every a, damn pitch. And he's a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Trevor Hoffman threw a changeup yeah. yeah. every single pitch, and he's a Hall of Famer. So don't give me that about you can't, you know what's coming. Hey man, I'm just, I'm just now processing this. You don't think the Astros had a huge advantage knowing what pitch was coming? Slightly. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you why. A slight one. Tell you why. First of all, in this game today, analytics take over. They mm -hmm. just, all this analytics, so they'll say Trevor Bauer throws a 2-2 pitch, this is what he throws. So now you have 80% of what Trevor Bauer is going to do on a 2-2 pitch, because analytics has told him what you're going to do. So that's cheating right there. I would rather have location than pitch. I would rather have location than pitch. Yeah, I'll tell you that. You. Would rather give me location, don't give me pitch. So you, no. you can like, you can lean out over here or you can Knowing that it's a location. Right? Yeah. You know, even though the pitcher might miss, but at least I can figure out I'm away. Give me, give me location. Don't give me pitch. I would agree with that because Ooh. I can prepare my body. You, exactly. For that. You can prepare you know, your can body prepare to make a little bit of adjustment. For that outside pitch. So right? if, if you tell me if it's a pitch is coming outside, I can be like, okay. But the tempo, what, the right? tempo is what you're sacrificing. What do you mean? It's like the early, the timing of the it. Timing, cause the yes, timing, because yes, okay. Of the you speed sacrifice and, a little timing, but you can always keep right. your hands back and flip it out there because you know it's a way. Mm -hmm. So when they say, oh, he hit the guard because the pitch was coming, it's, it's small. I'm not saying it's, it doesn't help, but it's a smaller percentage than mm. what people making it out to be. So, so that, the, the sign stealing okay. or PEDs, which one was worse? Well, I say PEDs. Really? Yes. Okay. Uh, and PEDs why? PEDs because, again, I feel like PEDs will tell me to sit back. For me, steroids, for all the hitters, whoever's using it, you can sit there because it's all about bat speed. You can sit there and wait, 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 wait. Oh, it was a fastball. Pow. Wait, 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 curveball. Pow. Because you have that power and speed to be able to wait to the last second 
to hit whatever pitch it is because you are so strong and so fast. Okay? So a, a pitcher a ground can, ball out becomes a Oh, it comes a line, line shot. Drive. Line <laughs> drive somewhere. Yeah. You know, 20 miles an the hour. thing about it is usually and usually when you're on that stuff, you didn't miss many pitches. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, 3-0, if you say 3-0, you're going to sit back and wait and you're going knock to knock it out the stadium. I'm going to switch topics a little bit. You're in camp with some, like, <laughs> some dudes. Some, some monsters. Some, dudes. some monsters, man. Yeah. What, what, what's that like being around, like, I mean, those, kind, those caliber of players? I mean, you got... One of the greatest hitters to ever live, Albert Pujols. Oh, yeah. Another of the greatest hitters to ever live, Mike Trout. You got Anthony Rendon, who's probably another one of the greatest hitters to ever Like I mean, you just you got Jay up, who kind of gets forgotten about in that, like, I mean. In that mix of just it's, dudes. It's nuts. Like, yeah. So what is it like, as an out, especially as a young outfielder, like mm-hmm. being around those dudes? Oh, uh, it's huge. I mean, I think the, the biggest thing that I get out of watching Trouty and Pujols and those guys is just the way they just go about the work, right? You just watch. You know, it's one of those things where we can have a conversation about it, we can talk about it, but just being able to sit back and kind of just see him in action, see him get after it, it's just huge. I mean, Albert, my God, can he hit. You know, I mean, just boom, boom, boom. Came in the game the other day, just line drive up the middle, just smooth, bat in the zone, what we just talked about forever. You could just see it, just the bat goes down, just boom, 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 all the way through. And just being able to be around that and see it and just know, like we talked about how simple you really can be to do this. You ever you ever think about being a two-way guy in the big leagues? I mean, obviously, I know yeah. you're like, because they were talking about when you got drafted, the, like, is he going to go as a position player? Is he going to go as a pitcher? Like, which one is he? Yeah, what's hard is, like, I was a shortstop. Mm. So, like, if you're a first baseman, like, it's not as much throwing as a shortstop. I mean, that, that deep of a throw, that's, that ball, the ball gets hit there the most out of, I think, any position in the, at least the infield. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's just so much throwing. And then me being a starter, too, like yeah. the expectations of the amount of innings to throw. So, you know, maybe if I was a closer, maybe, or if I played first base or, you know, a position where it's not as much throwing. Um, but I love hitting. Like, I, you know, I haven't hit in a long time. It sucks. Like I go to pick. DH. I, yeah. Well. Yeah. I, I DH'd in, in rookie ball my first year. But like I go to pick up a bat at the field and it's like everyone's like, ah, oh, like don't don't touch the bat. It sucks, man. Because it's like, guys, I'm not just like a PO. Like I'm an athlete. Like it's not like I'm gonna break my. You know what I mean? Like. Did you get a homer? You, you hit a homer? No, no. But my first game, my second at bat, I hit a triple to the wall. Mm. So that was cool. That was that was like. Really you just gonna say that's how you gotta shut them up. You gotta show them then your you BP. Right? That's all you gotta do. You yeah. let them talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You pick up the bat and you like and you look at them like, hey. Yeah. But know? yeah, I, I haven't been able to hit in a long time and oh, I miss it yeah. though. I, I really do. Um, I try to step on the mound sometimes, mess around the bullpen. They shut that down quick. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're super protective. Give me an inning, coach. <laughs> <laughs> all position players want to get an inning on the mound like oh, in their man. career. Yeah. So bad. all I want, all I want is to be in like. God forbid we got to play 17 innings or something, but just give me a chance to hose someone at a base. I yeah. want to be in the outfield and just try to make a throw. Come on, just I just want to. <laughs> I just want to show it off one time. Yeah, that's all. What What are you looking forward to, like about the big leagues most? Like, what, like, what is it? Is it the lifestyles, the just competing? Is it the you know being around? Like, what What do you want to? Lifelong dream. Just really like as far as like into the big leagues, just really getting out there and like improving that I belong. You know what I mean? That's like the first thing, you know, you, you, you want to get there and, and prove that, you know, you got what it takes to compete at that level. You know, that's the first thing. You, you want to get out there and, and show that, hey, you know, not only am I here, but I can help the team win. I can, I can put something forward, right? I'm not here just to say hey and, and go away. I'm here to do some damage, right? Like, that's, that's first and foremost for me, yeah. no doubt. Like, any way I can help. What, what are you looking forward to most? What do you got, like? Um, well, just this upcoming season, or no? Like, but when you get to the big, like, what what is um, what's the picture in your head? Because like, yeah, you, 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 everyone everyone kind of a mat. You grew up, you watch these guys play, and you have this like image in your head you know, that you want to like, if it's the last second shot in game seven, or if it's bottom of the ninth and you strike. Like, what what is it in your head that like that you're looking forward to about it? I don't know if it's a specific thing. Um, obviously, like winning a World Series, that's what everyone mm-hmm. says. That's the ultimate goal. Um, I think it's bringing, like, especially with being with the Reds, is like bringing that excitement back to the city. Yeah. And like the era of the big red machine. Like, I talk about that all the time is like bringing, I love 
that excitement in the state, like you can feel that energy. Um, and I think bringing that back to a city that, you know, needs that um, is special. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I'm also like, I'm big on community service. So also having like even more of a platform to give back um, has always been like really important to me. So I know like when I get to that, that place, I'll have more of, a, of an impact. I, I'm able to give back more and, and yeah. help in that aspect. So. You, you mentioned platform, like you're obviously really big on, on social. Mm -hmm. like you're, you're trying to utilize that platform for good things. Like, what yeah. got you into, like, what what made you? I mean, you grew up obviously with like in the social media yeah. era, but like, what got you in, in into that? When did you start with that? What made, when did you um, realize that's something you liked? Maybe like my what was it? Probably like our freshman year, sophomore high school. Like yeah. Instagram really like blew up. Yeah, freshman sophomore year, everything started to start yeah. to pop a little bit. People yeah, started getting on the gram. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, but now like it's changed. Like what I was posting from when I was like in high school, it wasn't anything bad. Yeah, like it's not like ten or fifteen years from now they're gonna find a tweet. <laughs> like, so, like, okay, dig it, you're gonna like, dig up some <laughs> dirt. Some, like malicious tweet. Yeah, like, check go, that tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah no, like go through. <laughs> no, but like it was, it wasn't like that. But it was just. Not nonsense, but it was just like a picture of like no like substance really behind mm -hmm. it. It would just be like a picture. Mm -hmm. But like I've realized like kind of a lot of my posts, like yeah, I'll have some posts of me just like chilling or something, but most of it's like there's substance behind it and there's actual like a story behind it. What do you want to do with that? Like do you know what you want to do outside of baseball? Obviously you said like yeah. community service and stuff like that. Like, what are you interested in outside of baseball? What do you want to turn that platform, that brand into? I'm a big art person, I love art. So like having players express themselves in whatever art form it is. Mm. And I think like creating a space and environment for that would be pretty cool. So whatever, I don't know what that looks like, um, but I think a lot of players really don't tap into that or really express themselves. And there are players that just don't have that, maybe they just don't have that talent, you yeah. know what I mean? But for the players that do, I think that'd be cool. But, but no, just on that same point, talking about rhyme or reason, social media, you on the social media. <laughs> so, oh, man. But, but I'm again, all over social media. Well, well, like, well, like for well, me, no, like. But no, but the thing about it is, I wanted to, I'm glad this kind of came up because I wanted to mention this to you about you and this social media. I want to understand your rhyme or reason on what in the hell you be doing on social media. <laughs> so, I mean, it's being looked at by all of social media, teams, mm. owners, GMs, other players. Yeah, I, I got you. So when I was younger, like coming up, I didn't have many friends or a social group or anything. Every time I opened my mouth, I was like, shut up, you're not funny, don't talk. Like, I mean, from, from like my baseball team, from people like out at lunch at school, it didn't matter. So then when I was 16, I ended up looking at myself in the mirror and like wondering one morning, like, man, why don't, what is it that people don't like? Why don't people like me? Well, what am I doing wrong? And at that day, I, I just decided like, look, I like what I see. I like what I see in the mirror. And as long as I'm okay with myself, then I'm, I'm gonna stop listening to all these other people and let them influence how I feel about myself. So after that day, anytime someone would say something to me, I would just fire back. Cause I'm like, oh, I got the, I got the self confidence that like, I can say something back. I'm okay with like I'm okay with the con like whatever like and, and so I probably went too far that way because after 16 years of like just being beat up nonstop, not physically but like mentally and stuff, being told to shut up, like I, I probably went all the way to that angle. And then that, I mean then social media comes along, right? And it's like this is just a really easy outlet because anyone can say anything negative to you at any time, right? And so it's like someone says something negative, I'm like uh, like you're stupid, you're you know, whatever the case yeah. is. And now as I've gotten older, like. That, uh, that kind of persona early in my career definitely contributed to people having this, what I would consider a misperception of who I am as a person. But it was 100% because of what I was putting out there, right? So I put that out there, then the media sees it, so now they have this perception. So every time they talk to me, it's like they're viewing me through this perception that they have before, and then they write these articles, they, and they talk about this on talk shows and stuff like that, and it perpetuates this, this narrative about me. So the last couple of years on social media, I've been trying to put out more lifestyle stuff, sh really show off who I actually am, and emphasize that more, just so people have the full story, that, like they can actually see who I, who I really and am. True, but like, but what, okay, but why, but yeah. why oh, again, I'm always, again, my biggest question always when people, but why do you need other people's influence? You want confirmation from other people. 
It's right here. You don't need confirmation from other people to say you need Trevor to be this way. No, Trevor know who he is. Let Trevor just look in the mirror, and that's all the confirmation mm. you need. And But I feel like when a lot of guys do certain things, and then you figure out maybe on the field or how you're hitting or how you're throwing or whatever, it's affecting that. Because you might not think it's affecting you, but subconsciously it's affecting you because now – you have a bullet, you know, a bullseye mm. on your back. Mm. Every little thing you do is going to get enhanced because of the way you are expressing yourself out in front of people. And if you don't perform, oh, they're going to use that as an excuse. Mm. It's always going to be some excuse if you don't perform. So my, my thought on that is like, while I have this platform that I'm on, uh, playing wise, while I'm, in, while I'm in the big leagues, I'm a big okay. leaguer, like, I have these opportunities. I'm, I'm a well-known athlete. People see whatever they see on TV, et cetera. And when you, when you stop playing, and you can speak to this better than any of us can, right? When you stop playing, like, all that goes away, right? And so now, like, Kenny Lofton going out and talking to someone is no longer, like, Kenny Lofton, the center fielder. It's like, oh, yeah, you used to play baseball type of thing. Like, so there's certain inroads that you can make, but not as much as when you're a current player. So I'm looking at my career, and I'm saying, okay, like, how can I maximize – Every, every bit of it, right? Like, obviously, I, my focus is 100% on the field, right? but I don't do baseball 24 hours a day. Like, there's downtime. You gotta recover. You gotta rest. You gotta take mm -hmm. your mind off of things sometimes. So, if I'm gonna take my mind off of things, some guys go play video games, some guys go mm -hmm. hang out with friends, some guys go to, you know, whatever, the, whatever they're into. Like, my, the way my mind works, it's a puzzle. I, I'm, I wanna figure stuff out. I wanna learn something new. I wanna educate myself. I wanna, like, see how I can, you know, and, and business is, like, super interesting to me in that, yeah. in that standpoint because there's, mm -hmm. it's always a puzzle to figure out. There's always things that are moving and changing. And it's like, okay, how do I, how do I fit in over here? Oh, that road closed off. Let me, di let me divert over here. How can we? So, like, this is how my mind's moving. And so I'm thinking, like, okay, if I'm, while well, I'm in the big leagues, like, if I can spend a little bit of each of my day, like an hour or two of, of my day, when I would be, let's say I'm watching a movie or a TV show, and instead I'm spending like a wasted that, two hours. Or yeah, let, let me invest that in, into myself, into my off-field portfolio, so I can maximize but, that time playing. But there's a difference between maximizing your off-field portfolio because now your on-field portfolio is one thing. Yeah. Your off-field portfolio is a different beast. Mm -hmm. And it's a business mind like beast. Mm -hmm. And you have to, you can't be business like and be on the media or going off on the media, going off on people on social media because now they're gonna look at, if you're gonna go into business with Trevor Bauer, you don't know if he's gonna go off on you mm -hmm. or he's gonna do that. You gotta look at in that dynamics point, too. Yeah. So if you wanna use your platform, try to stay positive for your off-field platforms. Mm -hmm. And then if you wanna have your, how you are on the field, just the way you carry your persona, that's fine. Cause that's just that part of it. But they wanna say, well, off the field, dang, he's a businessman. He's like the, you know, bless his heart, Kobe Bryant, you know, how he's, you know, that's how he's kinda of holding his business, you know, and that's, you know, how you wanna do it. So if you wanna look at it that way, look at it that way in that way that business people are looking at him when he's done. So I've, I've obviously seen some, some of the tweets and things that you've put out. Mm -hmm. um, I've had to take a couple down. You know, I've had, you know, the club, you know, send me a note and say, hey, look, you know, we think that, you know, what you put out, um, we think you should take that down, right? Like, we, you know, we don't appreciate, you know, you speaking on that. My question is, we go out and play a game, right? That's what we do for a living. But at the same time, we're people. Right, and we this have, a, we have this, opinions. This is where I get stuck too. We have opinions, <clears throat> and and the thing is, is like if I have an opinion, if I feel strongly about something, why do I have to just keep it inside and not and not express okay. it? Yeah. Right? Okay. Because, okay. Hold on. Hold on. I, I know where you're coming <laughs> yeah. from. It's the professional side. Professional, but like, first of all, they pay your paycheck. Okay. Without without yeah. them, you wouldn't have that platform. They on you. <laughs> you wouldn't have that platform. Some, some stuff's inappropriate, right? Some stuff that comes up in our heads is like, okay, look, this is too far. Uh -huh. <laughs> I put this out, right? And a yeah. kid sees it. Yeah, yeah. But, I'm, but I'm thinking more of like opinion on, you know, business stuff, stuff that's happening around the world, mm -hmm. right? You have yeah. an opinion on that and you put it out there, all of a sudden, 
you know, people are knocking my sister door talking about is, what are you listen, doing? And it's like, so why. I can't have an opinion on what's going on. My in the sister country, always in the world. says, she's like, Hunter, you're a sellout. Because my sister's like, you know what I mean? Down for the cause. Down, you know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about. But um, that's something that she always, you know, messes with me. She understands the professional side. Um, but that she's always like, oh, so you got to keep your mouth shut? It's like, yes, Liberty, because there's certain. You know, like after baseball or even, you know, endorsements or people mm-hmm. wanting you to represent their brand. Yeah. You put something out and it's like, well, we can't represent this dude. But I guess the question is, mm-hmm. you know, what, where is the line? Okay. Well, I so, think, okay, well, the, I line, think, the, I think line the problem is, is, the problem is, the line is, you being Joe, you're not LeBron. LeBron can have a political way of thinking but, but, why, can, so, but why can LeBron established. have it and not because because again, he established. it's all yeah. about it's all about establishing yourself or whatever because again you you're gonna need people behind you to help almost help pushing you forward but if you are somebody trying to help you push you forward but you putting that dead weight it's gonna be hard for somebody to help pushing you forward mm. because you pushing that dead weight back on them to try to help you so basically, there's a time and a place. I always say there's a time and a place. If it ain't the time, it yeah. ain't the place. Yeah, yeah. This ain't the place. If it ain't the time, this ain't the place. All right. Uh-oh. I got to, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Bring it. I got to have, I got to have, I mean, your, your story, uh, your best story. Like, give me, like, <laughs> your time in Cleveland, you yeah. played with some freaking characters, man. <laughs> like, like, give me, give me something that's. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. I mean, who? I mean, got like Albert Bell, I got Albert Bell. I mean, you got, Albert, you got, you got Manny, Cruz. you got like Bartolo. I mean, you can, I mean, you can even go Jeter, you can go A Rod, you can go. I mean, you oh, played with okay. like, so here you we played go. with so, the dudes. Probably heard about the, they call Albert Mr. Freeze. Mm-hmm. You know why? You, don't know, you know why, right? They call it Albert Bell Mr. Freeze. So Albert used to like the locker room cold. So Albert was very methodical. Albert was analytical before analytical was analytics. Mm-hmm. That was Albert. Albert used to come every hitter, every time he used to hit, he used to come back in the clubhouse and write down what the pitcher did to him, what he threw the guy before him and after him. Mm. He wrote all that down on cue cards. He had them in his locker. How big, how big was this like? Oh, it was, it was huge. Massive, but he but had yeah. all the cue cards of every pitcher, what they did, what they did, hit it before, whatever. So he used to come in and every time. And so he was going in, he used to turn the thing down to like 40 degrees. And all of a sudden, the guy's coming in, it's like, man, Albert got the thing, Call you walk in there, I go in there and use the bathroom or something. And the guy's in the big old winter coat, so I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. Albert turns, so I turn it back to 80. So whatever, a couple of innings, Albert come and do cue cards and he turn it down again. So all of a sudden, I was like, they say, so one of the clubhouse kids said, Kenny, Albert turned it down again. So I went up there and I turned it back to 80. So he must have, you know, popped out of him. He got pissed off. I came and I turned the thing back up. And he got mad. He turned the thing down to 40 and took a bat and just tore up the dang thermostat. Oh, so, so you couldn't change it. So yeah. you couldn't change it. <laughs> <laughs> so the next three oh, or four wow. days, it was ice cold. Everyone's the freezing. Because the clubhouse <laughs> had its own, but outside they had, so guys yeah. were changing clothes in the bathroom, in the, in the training rooms. And the <laughs> was, it, was it like hot? Like, was it humid outside? Was it hot? Or? Yeah, what time of year was it in Cleveland? Yeah. I don't know. It, it don't matter. Don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter. Oh. I would just like it cold. And yeah. didn't nobody else like it cold but him. <laughs> so another story, <laughs> that one. So I'm on second because I was, you know, again, I got on a few times and Carlos Baerga, he was a doubles machine. Mm. So I get on first, and Albert Carlos hit a double, and I'm taking a touch first. And I turn around to third, and I touch third, and I look up. Albert's halfway down the line. Stop! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? He wants the RBI. He wants the RBI. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he wants the RBI, right? Oh, so all of a sudden, sweet. he comes in, man, oh, don't man. stop. Next time, <laughs> next time, <laughs> Kenny, man, don't, you don't just stop at second base. I said, Albert, it's a double. He said, we're well, tripping, fall on the base or something. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so one time, a couple times the ball hit or whatever, and I kind of took a long thing around, and all of a sudden, he was all happy. He said, thanks, man, or whatever. So I, <laughs> the next time I stopped at third base, and, he, and Carlos said, man, what happened? I said, man, I just my leg or something. I don't know. <laughs> Carlos was like, you ain't a double. You should be scoring. Yeah, yeah. You got one guy <laughs> so, behind you that wants said, you to run. Know, you so got one. Like, I don't know what to do, so I didn't, so I didn't score, and then Albert got a run. And then another time, Albert wasn't this one hitter. He was not doing that good against, but I was on second base. So I look up, you know, cause he, you know, he didn't feel like he can get a good hit. So he was like, I'm like, what? 
<laughs> oh, he wants me to try to steal it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, this dude is tough, whatever. And I'm like, so he took a pitch. I'm like, Albert, he's like, he stepped off. He took a, you know, he's, <sighs> took a swing. He was like, <laughs> oh. so strike one. Oh, I saw the strike two. Like, he took another pitch. He's like, I'm like, oh. all right. So the next pitch is what the guy threw, and he threw me out. <laughs> I got back. I got Just like, <laughs> what are you doing? You are like, dude, dude, you tried to, you tell me, you told me to steal. Yeah. yeah. And I got out. All right. We're gonna wrap it up right there. We can keep talking, yeah. but we're that was good, man. Thank you guys for coming. That was, that was awesome. That was great. Yeah. That was awesome. Is it good enough? Yeah.